either of us, right? Like, so, you know, you don't, you don't want to come to people with, with a boatload of needs and say, oh, great, guess what I got for you? A shitload of baggage. I mean, that's just... So, the solution is you deal with your baggage internally, you know? I mean, what do you, what do you love? Hitler believed God told him he has to choose. Nothing profound in that okay. since Monica right. left. Monica, no, but Luke is so dismissive. I, no, I, don't, I don't believe there are any fertile women in the chat room right now. <laughs> I, for one, am equally interested, or not quite equally, but almost as interested in men's opinions as women's. Almost. Wow. What, what, or maybe I'm just, maybe I'm fooling myself. What, what, um, what do you, uh, well, what do you love? Can I ask, I mean, do you love, I don't like to inquire too deeply about other people's faith because unless they're interested in sharing but I mean are, are you what's your experience of God my experience of God like I don't really have one it's just really distant and uh, I believe he judges so I believe that people who do bad will get punished like I don't I'm not pleading for mercy just like give me what I deserve right you know I don't want you to I'm not getting down on my knees and pleading for mercy. Right. Um, just give me what I deserve. I'm, like right. I've done some good things, I've done some bad things. Um, they're they're fairly even. I'd like <laughs> to think I've done a little more good than bad. Um, but like I heard one person say that heaven or hell is you'll get to watch a movie of your life. You know, and you'll you'll get to feel the right. consequences of everything you've done to other people. Oh, that sounds very just to me. I mean, that, I think that's yeah, very just. Yeah. I want that. Right. I want yeah. the just. I want to feel all the needless pain that I cause other people, and I want to feel all the needless joy that I cause other people. But just like give it to me straight. Yeah. You know, like don't strike me. Right. You know, don't <laughs> don't expect me to plead for anything. Right. Just like just give it to me straight. Well, um, I, I I like that as well, and that I think that's a lot like what um, Rabbi Akiva's as I've heard it put to me, was his view of heaven, essentially, was that, or the afterlife, was that you were, yes, all the things you had done, it wasn't, there was none of this, you know, a Beth dead uh, kind of baptism that happens in other traditions. Right, you know, right. That always bothered me. Like, it's, Funny you, you pay for what you've, you, yeah. you, you experience genuine contrition for those things you've done wrong, and that's a process, and, it, and it, it's painful if you've done a lot of things wrong. Um, and then you, you know, um, and then you, you get to go somewhere good. Like, I saw this movie about eight, six years ago, and I don't remember the title, but it's about a Hollywood agent. One day in his life, I think it's based on one day in the life of Ivan, the, the, the Tolstoy short story, not the Soldier Nitz and oh, okay. One Day in the Life. And so it's an agent, and I think he got to have, he got to have sex with some really hot chicks in this movie. Um, he got to snort coke off their thigh in the back of a limo. I mean, there was this like, really stacked check that he got a hummer from. <laughs> I mean, these are the things I remember. These are the things I care about. And uh, so, like, he had it really good. And then he was al came home from a party. I think he had a falling out with his girlfriend who he'd been snorting coke off her thigh. And so he ordered in two hookers. And then they're doing drugs together. And uh, I think even before he got to have sex with them, which was like a real shame. Like, I thought this was a great point that Howard Stern made when uh, the Columbine kink killers, he said, mm -hmm. like, why didn't they at least have sex with the girls before they I, killed them? I remember that, yeah. Like, I remember, who was the guy, used, Steve Allen used that as an example of a speech of how horrendous Howard Stern is. Right. And now he was giving this speech about how bad Howard Stern was. And when he gave that example of Howard Stern saying that, I was the only person in the room to bust up laughing. Because I <laughs> thought it was like a profound point. That, you know, that, that, that Howard Stern made. I thought it was a totally legitimate point. <laughs> and Steve Allen was using it as an example of uh, uh, making uh, discourse crude. Um, but anyway, so this agent... But it's not... It's, yeah, I'll go to bat very briefly for Howard Stern on that. It's not... You see, the problem there to me is that... It, it's... There, there, Alan is telling Howard Stern, you shouldn't say that because that's an unpleasant thought. Because, yeah. uh, because presumably neither Howard Stern uh, nor uh, either Luke or myself are fans of sexual assault. But that's not the point. Right. The point is that is he's looking at it from but the why perspective. Why would someone like be more into murder than rape? 
great. Right. <laughs> it just um, doesn't. It just doesn't make sense to me. Well, no, I get that. I, I, I mean, I can understand. I mean, <laughs> being more into better than right. Well, well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is so dark. I am going to get so yeah. much trouble for this. But it, it shouldn't be a source of, you know, okay, well, well, regardless, I understand the inquisitiveness with which Howard Stern approached that right, question, right. because me, because he's wondering. Yeah, I did too. I burst out laughing when I heard it. Right. Everyone in the room was like, giving me the dirty look. Uh -huh. I thought it was funny. So anyway, yeah, okay. in this movie, the agent, um, Hollywood agent, he's doing drugs with these two hookers, and he has a stroke. Yeah. And the hookers run out without actually calling 911. And someone else calls 911 and takes him to a hospital and he's on life support. And then there's like this, some moment of grace while he's on life support that like gives his life meaning and redemption and salvation and then he croaks. But that didn't do it for me because the moment of grace was when he was on life support and he wasn't really conscious. Yeah. So that kind of um, deathbed confession just doesn't mean it, mean it. Like for me, if that movie had to have meaning, he would have had to have done something. Yes, before he could have redemption, you just kind of have a feeling. Right, I uh, we're in sync on that. I mean, I, I that was the the least palatable thing about um, different Christian denominations was the idea that you know salvation is through um, either through faith or even worse, just through you're one of the elect and you just were born with you were born with it. To me, it was no faith through through works. I guess made sense to me. And, and works would include, in that case, okay, he realizes that he led a shitty life and hurt people, okay, then he'll go and, 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 and do his yet level best to, to make it right somehow. That, mm -hmm. that would mean something. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I agree with that. Uh, verse 46, as it says, be careful to perform all the words of this Torah. So this isn't like fun and games. Right, this right. Isn't, uh, this isn't like, it's just not saying have faith in Hashem. Yeah. Um, he's not saying, here's what you need to believe, or I want you to get right with God, or I want you to uh, just like right. do this Torah and be careful about it. Right, yeah. Like it's a program for action. Yeah, and for this is not a trifling thing for you, it right. is your very life. Yeah. Uh, through it you shall long endure on the land that you are to possess upon crossing the Jordan. It, it right. Um, it's just, okay, so. Take to heart all the words with which I have warned you this day. Well, how, no, no one really clearly. We're not. There's a problem then there because we've got um, uh, tomes and tomes and tomes of commentary on what exactly are the words trying to tell us, or what do they mean? So you can be as careful as one man, one person can be as careful as they want. They're not going to crack it. They're not going to figure out if it's a rule book. It's a very ambiguous rule book, and you know, and then. And then you're, he's telling you, for this is not a trifling thing, this is your life, man. I mean, do you want your life to be a very ambiguous rule book? Um, at least if you're going to give me a set of instructions that, that I'm going to, you know, either observe or be, um, or, or, or face total ruin, you know, try to make them clear. The government is trying, like, uh, and if the U.S. government tries, then it really must be, I mean, I don't know. Well, many of the rules are ambiguous. It says that we're learning at all. There's not much okay. ambiguity about that. Right, but okay, right. So don't wear linen and wool. And um, um, but I, I guess the ambiguities creep in mostly in the interpretations themselves because there's this concept of putting the fence around the law, and suddenly I forget what it is because you're not supposed to break a tree branch on Shabbat, and suddenly that's why I, that's why you can't. Uh, ride a bike on Shabbat, yeah. like, you know, it just, it, it's, um, you know, and then you never know whether a peanut's a legume or a grain, that sort of thing, like, so it's, it's, yeah, I just, uh, to me it feels a little sadistic, because it feels like, if you're going to tell someone that this is the sum total of existence, that this is your life, this is not trifling, this is your life, um, and then you put them in a position by making it where they're totally dependent upon the people who are interpreting it for them, because that's the nature of the enterprise. It's the intellectuals who are going to decide. Um, so you're just giving their life to intellectuals, to the to to the to to, to the people who can who are best at studying the scripture. They're the ones who are going to tell you what your life is. What better group of people to run? A people. Right. Um, 
No, I, I, don't, I don't know that there is a better one. No, intellectuals are good. Maybe, but, you know, maybe 